oblique canal so here you can see curls upward so here is the fascia transfer cell is these arching fibers so here we are trying to go inside so here i can see these arching fibers and now we can see that internal oblique fibers they were able to reinforce hello i am dr azal from medicovisual.com and in today's visual lecture we will briefly talk about the inguinal canals anatomy so in the previous lecture we had seen that how the testes and uh, the vas deferens how it traverses through the body wall through the interior body wall and as it happened uh, the layers many of the most of the layers of anterior abdominal wall they were stretched along with it to form what we call as spermatic cord so here for example the fascia transfer cells its layer its extension was stretched along with it to form what we call as the uh, internal spermatic fascia then as i have told you in the last lecture that transverse abdominal muscle uh, it gives a way to this it forms a, there is a hole inside it so it just simply passes through this and uh, this vas deferens it does not pick up any layer from the transverse abdominis muscle then after the transverse abdominis muscle there comes this internal oblique and here this is the internal oblique muscle and it gives a coating a layer to this spermatic cord and it is called cremasteric fascia and cremasteric muscle and finally we have this external oblique this is the external oblique muscle and it forms the external spermatic fascia now this is very important question that is often asked in your exam from the spermatic fascia what layers are derived from what structure of course this is the vas deferens this is the vas deferens then this is the internal spermatic fascia which is extension of this is the internal spermatic fascia which is extension of what thing it is the extension of fascia transversalis so fascia fascia transversalis this is very important you must remember this this is the extension of fascia transversalis then again there is no extension from the transverse abdominis muscle so if we come superficial then there is another muscle called internal oblique muscle and from internal oblique muscle there is the cremasteric muscle and fascia cremasteric i hope the spellings are correct so they arise from the internal oblique and finally there is the external oblique muscle uh, which forms the external spermatic fascia external spermatic fascia which forms from the external oblique muscle so please don't get confused and don't forget these things and by the way don't get confused these are just the part of muscle of course these muscles are much larger these are not the complete muscles these are just the parts of muscle that i wanted to show you here within the fascia transverse cellis this opening will be the deep inguinal ring and here is the a uh, superficial in inguinal ring now even at this time this is an oblique canal within the body wall within the anterior body wall but this canal initially it is very small you can see it is oblique canal but it is very small it is almost 1 to 2 cm initially but later what will happen that muscles will grow and as the muscles will grow muscles grow in such a fashion that they grow laterally and they grow in such a fashion that the superficial muscle they grow less in the lateral direction and deeper muscle they grow more in the lateral direction so i am going to hide this so then you will be able to see what i mean so initially you can see almost all of these all of these three muscles they are almost at the same level but when they grow laterally let's see this is the deeper most muscle transverse abdominis so here you can see so here you focus now you see initially there there they were all at the same level but 
as they grow they grow in such a way that transverses abdominis it grows more laterally more laterally but the internal oblique it is slightly less laterally so i hope you got the point now let's add the skeleton into this 3d model so here is the skeleton and another thing another structure that is very important let's add that as well and this is the ligament and this ligament is called inguinal ligament so basically this inguinal ligament if you look carefully it is the lower part of aponeurosis this is the this is the external oblique and this lower part of aponeurosis or tendinous part of external oblique it goes down and it curls upward sort of like this in a hook like fashion if you see from the side or if you see it from this side here you can see it curls in a hook like fashion to form this ligament ligamentous band called uh, inguinal ligament can you appreciate these structures uh, i'm gonna draw it for you as well i really want to make your concept pretty clear so that is how it is like this so here is basically external oblique and basically it's nothing more than an extension of aponeurosis of external oblique so this is the inguinal ligament so let's go back so here we are back now uh please note that this is the an anterior superior iliac spine where it is so yeah here is the anterior anterior superior iliac spine this structure is the anterior superior iliac spine this is anterior superior iliac supine and one attachment of this ligament is with the anterior superior iliac spine and the medial attachment is with the uh, here is a tubercle called pubic tubercle this is the pubis bone by the way so here it its attachment is with the pubic tubercle so that is the inguinal ligament now along with the inguinal ligament there are certain other important ligaments that you must know so basically these are again the continuation of inguinal ligament let me just isolate these structures so that you will understand them more clearly so here you can see that this is the inguinal ligament and as it comes medially it rolls slightly on this uh, pubic bone and then it rolls backward and it flows along the curvature of this uh, pubic bone to form what we call as lacunar ligament and this lacunar ligament then moves on along this line this is the pectinate line it moves along this line called pectinate line to form the pectinate ligament but let's not talk about pectinate ligament let's talk about these reflected fibers of this ligament some of these fibers of this lacunar and uh, this inguinal ligament they go posteriorly and superiorly and they shake hand with their friends from the other side of the border <laughs> not border i mean from the other side so here uh, on the other side of course as well there is this uh, these ligaments and these fibers from this ligament as well as this right and left ligament they are reflected sort of towards each other and this is the reflected inguinal ref reflected component or reflected part of inguinal ligament so if we label it uh, this is of course the inguinal inguinal ligament and here as well this is the inguinal ligament here is somewhat here is the lacunar ligament lacunar ligament and here is the pectinate pectinate ligament and here are the reflected fibers or reflected part this is the reflected part of reflected part of uh, the inguinal ligament or lacunar ligament basically a lacunar ligament is again just a continuation of inguinal ligament so these ligaments are important to note here now let's see what is the anatomy of this canal now anatomy of canal slightly changes that as the 
as this uh, further relocation of muscles and growth of muscles occur and by the way the, this relocation and growth it occurs after the birth uh, it is said that up to one year of age of the baby the inguinal canal is very small but after that it gradually increases in size and it may become up to four to five centimeter in length now it is important to understand that what structures are there within the inguinal ligament and what are the what are the boundaries of this ligament the most important structure that is inside the inguinal ligament in males is this vas deferens covered by these uh, spermatic fascias and in females it is the round ligament Along with vas deferens, there is certain neurovasculature. We will not talk about that. There are blood vessels and nerves. Basically, there is the genitofemoral nerve. Let's not talk about that. Now, let's talk about the boundaries of this canal. And to understand the boundaries, what I will do is that I will hide these coverings of this vas deferens. So, by the way, spermatic cord is just this vas deferens and its neurovasculature covered by these coverings these facial and fasciomuscular coverings uh, these fasciomuscular coverings that are surrounding this vas deferens as a whole this structure is called spermatic cord so let's hide these coverings let's remove these coverings to expose these uh, rings by the way this is the superficial ring and here is the uh, here is the here so here is the deep inguinal ring deep ring and the other one is the superficial ring so these structures will become more clear if i hide these coverings so here we go i have hidden these coverings and now to understand the boundaries of this canal we will go inside the canal but before that i think you can appreciate these boundaries just by looking at this model so if we talk about the anterior boundary so here is the anterior boundary of course anteriorly we have this aponeurosis of external oblique muscle so here is the external oblique muscle so basically this aponeurosis of external oblique muscle is forming the anterior wall so this anterior wall is formed by external oblique aponeurosis at all the places but at the at the lateral end there is another structure as well which is forming this boundary uh, and with this anterior wall at the lateral end it is also formed by internal oblique muscle here if you look carefully that this is the vas deferens and here it just entered from here you can see it just entered the it just entered the uh, inguinal canal and here here you can see it the, here the anterior boundary is also anterior wall it is also contributed by this muscle and this is the internal oblique muscle so what they say is that at the lateral side of inguinal canal this uh, anterior wall it is reinforced by the fibers of internal oblique muscle so please note that down then if we come to the posterior wall the posterior wall is mainly formed by fascia transversalis so here is the fascia transversalis and it is forming the anterior uh, sorry posterior wall and posterior wall at the medial end it is also reinforced by what is this this conjoint tendon and this conjoint tendon as i have told you in the last lecture it consists of two muscles so here is the transversus abdominis here is the internal oblique they join together to form a single tendinous aponeurosis which is called conjoint tendon and this conjoint tendon at the medial end this conjoint tendon is going to form the posterior wall of inguinal canal so anterior wall and posterior wall both are clear and floor is of course formed by what structure inguinal ligament it is very easy to understand so floor is formed by inguinal ligament but at the medial most end at the medial most end floor is also contributed by lacunar ligament and by the way regarding posterior wall 
if you look carefully here are these uh, what is this reflected uh, reflected part reflected fibers of inguinal ligament and at the posterior wall posterior wall at the medial end is also reinforced by these fibers these reflected fibers of inguinal canal so anterior and posterior wall is clear and inferior wall is also clear now if we talk about roof the roof is formed by these arching fibers so here you can see that these fibers of internal oblique as well as transversus abdominis they arch over to move back and they move back to attach here at the pubic crest here is the uh, let me show you so here is the, the tip of pubic bone here is the pubic crest so they arch over this vast deferent and spermatic cord they arch over and they then join together to form the conjoint tendon and then they move posteriorly so if you know their course that where they are going these muscles where they are going it will become very easy to understand the boundaries so roof is formed mainly by these arching fibers of internal oblique and uh, transversus abdominis muscle now to understand it more clearly we will take a tour of this canal what we will do is that we will imagine that we can go inside this this hole we will go inside the superficial inguinal ring and then we will see that what is inside this so i am very excited about this tour but don't try to enter each and every hole you ever see in your life so but i will try to enter this hole for the sake of science so let's go inside so here we are trying to go inside the superficial inguinal ring and here we have entered the superficial inguinal ring very carefully and now we are inside the superficial inguinal ring now if i look up i can see these arching fibers it's very interesting and fascinating so here i can see these arching fibers so uh, interiorly there is the internal oblique fibers and posteriorly there are the transversus abdominis fibers so i can see both of these fibers transversus abdominis and internal oblique uh, I think we came back let's try to enter again so yeah so roof is formed by these arching fibers and if I look posteriorly I mean uh, I entered in such a way that I will have to look rightward so here I am looking rightward and here all I can see is the fascia transfer cellus and if I look anteriorly here all I can see is the aponeurosis of external oblique muscle but here if i uh, remain just at the medial side i can also see the conjoint tendon so here i can also see the conjoint tendon forming the posterior wall reinforcing the posterior wall uh, now i will try to go further and here i came at the medial end of this inguinal canal and here i can see that anterior wall is also reinforced by internal oblique muscle it's very easy to understand isn't it with 3d the learning has become much easier even for me i'm very much enjoying this process of tour of the inguinal canal and now we will try to come out of the deep inguinal ring right so now let's take a tour again and this time we will enter through the deep inguinal ring so let's again take a tour so here here is the deep inguinal ring it is basically a defect in the fascia transversalis nothing more so here we are entering the deep inguinal ring and 
in front of us we will be welcomed by the fibers of internal oblique muscle where and here they are forming these internal oblique muscle fibers they are forming they are reinforcing the anterior wall of inguinal canal and of course in front of that there will be the external oblique muscle so let's again move forward let's go inside i think we are now inside the vest deference we do not want to enter the vest deference and now we can see that there are superiorly uh, roof is formed by these arching fibers and now if i come here here we can see posterior wall is being reinforced if i slightly go upward so posterior wall is being reinforced by uh, the conjoint tendon and now we will come out through the superficial inguinal ring so that was the tour through the uh, inguinal ring now i'm damn sure that uh, you understood it pretty clearly but to recap this we will draw a table and we will try to fill this table and now i'm gonna write these things and you will try to answer this so anterior wall posterior wall and then there is roof and uh, we have floor interior wall posterior wall roof and floor and we will also write lateral and medial lateral and medial anterior wall is fully formed it doesn't matter whether it is lateral or medial there is always a contribution of external oblique aponeurosis so external oblique aponeurosis will be definitely there here also and here also so throughout the course uh, by the way also please note that the inguinal canal it starts somewhat midway midway between the uh, inguinal ligament so here is the let's suppose inguinal ligament and if we equally divide somewhat here will be the start of somewhat here will be the start of uh, the inguinal canal because there in somewhat here will be the deep inguinal ring so anterior wall it is formed by external oblique but because at the medial end there is that deep inguinal ring posteriorly so this is a weak area so medial not medial lateral so lateral end is also reinforced anteriorly lateral end is also reinforced anteriorly by another muscle what is the name of this muscle i have just shown you you have taken the tour of that i know you know this and the name of this muscle is internal oblique it's very easy to understand internal oblique then if we come to the posterior wall so both sides um, whether it is lateral end or medial end completely there is the fascia transversalis so fascia transversalis here also fascia transversalis here again at the medial end is the weak point so at the medial end here is what is this superficial inguinal ring so here is the defect at the medial end so here the posterior wall will be reinforced and posterior wall will be reinforced at medial end by what structure one structure is conjoint tendon if you can remember just conjoint tendon that is also enough you don't need to remember anything but if you still want to remember another structure please remember the reflected fibers of reflected fibers of another another um, ligament called inguinal ligament so and roof is formed by as a whole the roof is formed by what structure roof is formed by arching fibers of internal oblique and arching fibers of internal oblique and transversus abdominis transversus abdominis muscle that is very easy finally uh, about the floor again it is very easy that it is formed by uh, <clears throat> inguinal ligament inguinal ligament 
here also inguinal ligament but at medial end there is the reinforcement by a lacunar ligament as well lacunar ligament so that was about the tour of this canal finally another important thing i know you may be bored by now but still i want to teach you yet another thing that please note that if i uh, hide this transverse uh, this uh, fascia transfer cellis one thing that you must note that the uh, at, at the lower end of course it has multiple attachment all these muscles have multiple attachment here we are concerned about the this lower end so at lower end uh, let's hide this as well so at lower end the transversus abdominis it is attached it is attached to lateral one third it is attached to lateral one third of lateral one third of inguinal ligament while the internal oblique it is attached to lateral two third of inguinal ligament so again let me tell you uh, because it's very important concept so here is the intern uh, so this is the inguinal ligament here is the inguinal ligament now if we divide it into three equal parts one two and three so one let's write it here one two two and here is the third part three now if you look carefully the internal oblique here it is attached uh, to the inguinal ligament to the lateral two-third of inguinal ligament so here it is attached to the lateral two-third of inguinal ligament but transversus abdominis i made it slightly translucent so you can slightly see what is behind that so if you see behind that somewhat here is the transversus abdominis and transversus abdominis is attached to lateral one-third internal oblique is attached to lateral two-third but transversus abdominis is attached to lateral one-third of the inguinal ligament so again i wanted to reinforce that point that transversus abdominis it tend to grow more laterally while internal oblique it tend to grow less laterally and that is why if you if i go back that is why you can see that uh here is the start of uh where it is so here you can see here is the start of uh this inguinal canal as soon as this vast deference enters traverses through the fascia transfer cellus and enters the canal this canal is started and because uh, this transversus abdominis it was attached to the lateral one third of inguinal ligament it had no contribution whatsoever to the anterior wall of inguinal canal but now this canal is started but because the internal oblique it was attached to the lateral two third it was attached to the lateral two third of the inguinal ligament that is why at the lateral end at the lateral lateral part of this inguinal canal this internal oblique fiber they were happily able to reinforce the interior wall so here you can see if uh, the youtube compression does not kill it here you can see that it was able to internal oblique fibers they were able to reinforce they were able to reinforce the anterior wall and of course majorly the anterior wall is formed by external oblique uh, doesn't matter whether it is the lateral part or medial part so i hope your concept must be crystal clear after watching this 3d based visual lecture on the anatomy of inguinal canal thank you so much for watching this video